Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this meeting of consulting parties. All right. Love you. Sorry about that. Start again. I have some mute problems. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for attending the, this meeting of consulting parties regarding the Confederate Memorial at Arlington National Cemetery. If you haven't already done so, please write your name, role, and the organization you represent in the chat box. For those on the phone, we will call on you during the, ro the roll call by your phone number to get your name and organization or affiliation. Can we go to the next chart, please? You could probably have them on the bottom of the chat. If you're interested in using closed captions, we'd ask that you, you look at the, the instructions on the chart and click the captions button on your mobile or the show captions button, which will show up on your computer. And then as people speak, it, the closed captioning will appear at the bottom of your, your screen. And if you would like to, you can then click the button again to turn off the captioning. I'll give you a second to look at the screen so that you can, you can uh, follow if you would like. Uh, next chart, please. Before we discuss the project at Arlington National Cemetery, I'd like to set out some ground rules and etiquette for this meeting. First, all attendees should keep their microphone and camera off until they are called on to speak. Once called, you will have the ability to unmute your microphone and turn on your camera. At that time, each person will have the same allotted amount of time to speak. Only one individual per consulting party will be allowed to provide oral comments during this meeting. All others will be in listen will be in listen only mode. If the spokesperson would like to cede the remainder of the time to another spokesperson or subject matter expert, they may, but they will not receive additional time to speak. If a party has no comment on a topic, please pass when you are called on. Please be courteous and respectful of others' opinions and statements. All voices are equally valued, but please respect the personal truth of others. Set aside judgment and assumptions. This meeting aims to receive input from a diverse group of interested parties, each with their own valuable perspective. I would like to stress that if anyone makes rude or inappropriate comments, they will be warned through the chat box and may be removed from the Zoom meeting. It will not be allowed to re-enter if the actions continue. The audio and visual portions of this meeting are being recorded, and a transcript is being written to help with the writing of the draft environmental impact statement. If you do not wish to be part of the public record of this meeting, please do not make any comments, written or verbal, during the meeting. Lastly, should you have any issues hearing or seeing the presentations, entering questions into the chat box, or for any other technical issues with Zoom, please type your issue into the chat box. Those on the phone should try one of the other numbers in your Zoom email confirmation if you have difficulties. Uh, next chart, please. First, I would like to introduce myself and the other presenter. I am Colonel Weicker, the Arlington National Military Cemetery Director of Engineering. My co-presenter this afternoon is Ms. Caitlin Smith, the Arlington National Military Cemetery Cultural Resources Program Manager and our Compliance Lead for the NHPA Section 106 efforts. If you have not done so yet, I invite you to visit the project website. The website is shown on this slide and it's https colon backslash backslash www.arlingtoncemetery.mil backslash about backslash confederate dash memorial dash removal. The project website hosts all information garnered to date, including the project scope, all consultation with the Virginia State Historic Preservation Office, the Confederate Memorial Phase Two survey report, and the public comment form, among many other pieces of information. 
There's also a project email that has been included here. Although we will accept comments received through the email address, I encourage you to access the comment form that will once again be accessible from the project website starting on September 29th. And that email is anc-commemorative-works at army.mil. I'll leave the website and the email up for just a, so that you can, if you would like to write that, write it down. All right, next chart, please. Our agenda is shown on this slide. First, we will have introductions and a roll call of attendees. Then we will lay out for you the role of our consulting parties and what the expectations are for your participation. Next, we will provide an overview of the project and briefly describe the Section 106 process and where we are currently at in that process. It is during this segment that we will ask for comments on various aspects of the Section 106 process. And then following the comment period, we will go over the next steps for the Section 106 planning process. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Caitlin Smith, our Cultural Resources Program Manager. Next slide. Good afternoon. So on this slide, you'll be seeing a list of organizations, individuals, and affiliations represented today during this consulting parties meeting. Hopefully you see your name on this list. I believe uh, it's on more than one slide. Um, so if you don't see your name yet, uh, we'll, we'll show you the next one in just a second. Um, this list is largely alphabetical. Um, we're going to do a, a brief roll call in a moment um, to check that everyone's on the list and everyone's in attendance. Uh, this again is not the list as you as noted in the email. This is not everyone who's been invited as a consulting party. This is everyone who accepted the invite to today's meeting. Um, so I'm going to be calling out um, uh, your organization's name. And if we can have uh, the main POC for each organization, um, just raise your hand and put a note in the chat. We'll just do our roll call that way. Due to the large number of participants, um, it will be difficult to do a verbal roll call. Um, so we're going to do it uh, virtually through the chat. If you're on the phone, though, when I call out, uh, when we call out your organization, we're going to ask you to unmute yourself, state your name, role in organization affiliation, uh, so that we know you're represented and we can track your participation in this meeting. Everyone else online, if you haven't already done so, please enter your information into the chat box, your name, your role, your organization and affiliation. Um, so go ahead and do that now. And then I'm going to real quick run through this list one by one. Um, we just updated this based on the registrations we were taking in as of 2 p.m. So uh, let us know if you are not represented. So first I have the American Institute for Conservation, AIC. Then I've got the Americans for the Public Arts, Public Arts Network. The American Battlefield Trust. Arlington County Government, Historic Preservation Department. The American Historical Association. The Arlington Historical Society. The Arlington House Family Circle. The Commission of Fine Arts, CFA. Defend Arlington. I believe we have an individual representing Defend Arlington, Veterans Defending Arlington, and Heritage Protection of North Alabama. The Relatives of Moses Ezekiel. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, Region 3. Guardians of American History. Heritage Protection of North Alabama. Louisiana State Historic Preservation Office. Metropolitan Washington Council of Governments. Missouri State Historic Preservation Office. Monument Lab. Monumental Task Committee. Mr. Ernest Blevins. And uh, apologies if I mispronounce anyone's name. Uh, Mr. Gene Kaiser of Charleston Athenaeum Press. Mr. David McAllister. 
Mr. Ted Eman, National Capital Planning Commission, NCPC, National Park Service, George Washington Memorial Parkway, National Trust for Historic Preservation. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce this. Pol political life? Political? My apologies. Uh, Preservation Virginia. Save Southern Heritage. Sons of Confederate Veterans. Southern Legal Resource Center. Uh, we have several Sons of Confederate Veterans local chapters who opted to represent themselves. The Maryland Division, Beaufort Plowboys, Camp 2128, NB Forest Camp number three, the Virginia Division, and the Tennessee Division. Friends of Judah P. Benjamin, South Carolina State Historic Preservation Office, Southern Legal Resource Center, Southern Poverty Law Center, the American Jewish Historical Society, the Organization of American Historians, the Society for the Preservation of Jewish Civil War History, the Virginia Council, the U.S. Army Center for Military History, United Daughters of the Confederacy, Veterans Defending Arlington, Virginia Department of Environmental Quality, Virginia Department of Historic Resources, Virginia Military Institute, New Jersey Flaggers, we've got Virginia on there twice. Uh, well, they are very important, of course, uh, the Department of Historic Resources, and uh, last but not least, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. So those are all the organizations we are tracking. Obviously, if you represent an organization that's not on that list, please enter that information into the chat so we are tracking it. And as you can see, we'll be using the chat quite a bit today. So as Colonel Weicker has already mentioned, um, please, we'll, we'll try to keep it organized and efficient in there um, since we will need that to pull information as we go through this process today. Well, thank you all very much for being in attendance. I appreciate everyone taking time today to join us for this consulting party meeting. Um, you've been invited to this meeting as potential consulting parties so that ANMC can consult with those individuals and organizations that have a stake in the process and outcome of the Confederate Memorial Removal Project. We are soliciting your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions to properly analyze and move through each step of the Section 106 process. We will eventually seek comments regarding potential mitigations for the development of an agreement, such as a programmatic agreement or a memorandum of agreement. However, the purpose of this meeting is strictly dedicated to discussions regarding the identification of historic properties, um, as that is the step we are currently at. I first want to go through the criteria that one is required to meet to be a consulting party. This criteria has been developed uh, with guidance from the National Historic Preservation Act. And this set of criteria is outlined on this slide. Uh, to be a consulting party, one must have a proven legal interest or a relationship to the project or affected property. An example of this would be an owner, a donor, or a creator of an affected property. Uh, you might also have a proven economic interest or relationship to the project or affected property, uh, such as a, evidence of a direct financial impact uh, related to the removal. You might have a, you might represent a historic preservation interest as an organization or an individual. You might be a subject matter expert or an official representative of a public interest group in historic or cultural resource preservation. Examples might be a historic preservation expert, uh, an expert in public memorials or Confederate memorials, cemeteries, and grave sites, an expert in public art, an expert on the sculptor, in this case, Moses Ezekiel, 
an expert on African American history, on Jewish American history, or on historic and cultural landscapes. Uh, you might represent a local historical society commission or local preservation group. Finally, the last criteria one could qualify under is as any party, including applicants, licensees, or permittees that may have responsibilities under an agreement, um, they must also be invited to participate in order to reach the agreement. So please understand that consulting parties can be added or removed by the agency, a and MC, throughout the entire Section 106 process. Currently, the agency will consider all written requests for individuals and organizations asking to participate as consulting parties. Uh, the Section 106 process allows for the entry of new consulting parties throughout the process if the agency, the State Historic Preservation Office, in this case, the Virginia Department of Historic Resources, the DHR, um, and in some cases, the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, if they agree. If there's not agreement, um, parties may seek the ACHP's opinion on the involvement. Next slide. So for the purposes of Section 106, there are three types of consulting parties, entitled, invited, and concurring. And it's important to know where you and your organization stands during the process in developing our final agreement. Most of you will fall within the concurring consulting party status. As part of the Section 106 process, we have those groups that are entitled to participate as consulting parties. Those entitled parties include the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, the State Historic Preservation Offices, and federally recognized tribes. These groups have the sole authority to execute, amend, or terminate any agreement between the parties. Next slide. The second type of consulting party are the invited signatories. These parties have the same rights to seeking amendment or termination of an agreement document as other signatories. These parties include local governments, applicants for federal funds, licensees, permits, and other approvals, an individual organization directly adversely affected, or any party that assumes a responsibility under an agreement document. And I must note that not all consulting parties will be invited to be signatories to an agreement document. And I'll also note that a refusal of an invited signatory to sign does not prevent the agreement from taking effect. Next slide. The third type of consulting party is the concurring consulting party. These do not have the rights of signatories and include all other consulting parties. These parties have participated in the Section 106 process and may be invited to sign the document as concurring parties. Their approval is not needed to execute, amend, or terminate an agreement document. Signing as a concurring party is primarily a way to express agreement with the contents of the document and acceptance of the outcome of the process. As consulting parties, we are looking to all of you uh, to share your views, to review documentation to support consultation, offer ideas, and consider possible solutions for the outcome of this project. However, ANMC is not obligated to carry out the preferences and recommendations of invited consulting parties. Next slide. So as most of you know, the proposed project is for the removal of a monument that commemorates the Confederate States of America from Arlington National Cemetery. ANMC, the agency, is mandated by Congress to remove the bronze elements of the memorial by January 1, 2024. The granite base and foundation will remain in place to minimize the risk of inadvertent disturbance to graves. There are no remains under the memorial, and the remains of those buried near or in the section will be protected and will not be relocated. ANMC understands that the removal of the Confederate memorial must be conducted in a manner that ensures the safety of the people who work at, the, work at and visit the cemetery, while also protecting surrounding graves and monuments. The entire process, including disposition, must occur according to applicable laws, policies, and regulations. If you wish to know more about the specific details of the memorial itself, please visit our website, which is listed on the slide, and please review to the, re, uh, refer to the other documents that were uh, sent to you um, in various links and your invite to this meeting. Next slide. ANMC is currently executing a coordinated NEPA and NHPA compliance effort to ensure our federal agency meets the requirements of all applicable laws, policies, and regulations. 
Before, an und before undertaking a federal action, all federal agencies, including the Army, must ensure compliance with NAPA, also known as the National Environmental Policy Act. This ensures that all federal agencies explore reasonable alternatives to the proposed action, that potential impacts to the environment are thoroughly analyzed, and that the public has an opportunity to provide input. ANMC is analyzing the environmental impacts that could result from implementing the proposed action or any reasonable alternatives. The agency does this by developing an environmental impact statement, also referred to as an EIS for the project. In this case, the impacts are related to the decision to remove the bronze elements, the disassembly of the bronze elements from the stone base, and the storage of the bronze elements. We are currently in the process of preparing a draft EIS. We are soliciting comments and discussion from the consulting parties with regards to potential impacts to historic properties on the disassembly and storage. These discussions will feed into the preparation of the EIS as well as any potential mitigations under Section 106. The Army must comply with the NEPA and NHPA requirements prior to any determination being made as to a final disposition of the monument including the possibility of transfer to a third party, such as the Virginia Military Institute. While we are aware of Governor Yunkin's interest in the possible transfer of the memorial to a third party, such as the Virginia Military Institute, the focus of today's discussion needs to center on the identification of historic properties. Next slide. ANMC has determined that pr the proposed monument removal is a federal undertaking with the potential to cause adverse effects on historic properties, and therefore we have begun the, the Section 106 process. The first step was for ANMC to initiate the Section 106 process with the Virginia Recording State Historic in progress. Preservation, otherwise known as the Department of Historic Resources, or DHR. In this step, we began identifying potential consulting parties and engaged the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, the ACHP, the federal agency responsible for historic preservation issues, for assistance with the Section 106 process. ANMC then issued an invitation to those consulting parties and the public through social media, our website, and local news outlets. This occurred with the NOI on August 4th. ANMC has also uh, initiated the next steps, the identification of historic properties. And we are, this meeting represents um, one of the final steps uh, in concluding, one of the final actions we need to conclude uh, that step, the identification of historic properties. We are starting to think about the next step, uh, which is the assessment of effects. The fourth and final step in the section 106 process displayed on this slide is the resolution of effects. In this final step, uh, the agency and consulting parties find that there are, if they, we find there are adverse effects to a historic property, then the agency and consulting parties must work together to reach agreement on a resolution. To do this, the agency must explore measures to avoid, mitigate, or minimize effects to historic properties and reach agreement with the State Historic Preservation Officer, and in this case, the ACHP. If they agree on how to resolve the effects, they then formalize this in an MOA, a Memorandum of Agreement, or perhaps a Programmatic Agreement, a PA. And executed and implemented uh, MOA or PA are legally binding agreements that contain the stipulations and mitigations the federal agency must carry out in order to proceed with the project or undertaking. Throughout the entire Section 106 process, the federal agency must consider public views and concerns about historic preservation issues. For more information on this project or to provide a written comment, please visit our website or send your comment to the Commemorative Works email. The results of our Section 106 process are an important component also of the NEPA, NEPA EIS. The process will feed information on impacts to cultural resources into that environmental impact statement. And that is why we are working on these two compliance efforts in conjunction. Next slide. So we are currently in the second step of the Section 106 uh, process, the identification of historic properties, and we're looking to move uh, on to the third step, assessment of effects. First, um, one must understand what a historic property is for us to discuss. Uh, 
discuss this. Historic properties are only those properties either listed or eligible to the National Register of Historic Places in this case. To identify all historic properties within the potential theory of pot the area of potential effect, um, otherwise known as the APE, uh, the agency develops this in concurrence with the State Historic Preservation Office, in this case, the DHR. Um, the APE is the geographic area within which an undertaking may directly or indirectly cause alterations to the character or use of historic properties. This includes the location where the project may be visible and or audible. Our original APE was concurred on uh, upon by the DHR. However, during the scoping period, we've received uh, comments um, uh, requesting that the APE be re-examined. And so uh, Arlington National Cemetery has taken those into consideration and we have uh, decided to expand the APE to a wider area. So we've determined that there's essentially two APEs, one for uh, direct effects and one for indirect effects. This slide shows the original APE, which really covers the direct effects to historic property. These examples would include removal, physical destruction, or alteration of a property from its historic location. Next slide. This slide shows the APE, of the larger APE we are now considering, which includes the boundaries of the entire Arlington National Cemetery Historic District. This includes some direct, but mostly indirect effects. It includes visual, atmospheric, or audible elements that diminish the integrity of the property's significant historic features and the removal of a contributing property from the historic district. Um, so I'll give you some quick examples of what indirect effects might be. These might be uh, atmospheric effects if we were building something like a new incinerator. Um, audible impacts would be noise from construction or in the cases of where an airport's being built, it might be the noise from flight paths. Visual effects would be changes to view sheds um, when you add or remove something. Uh, an example would be when uh, cell towers can be seen from many miles away. So in our case, the proposed removal of the Confederate Memorial would result in the removal of a cultural resource from within the historic district. This would change the use and design of Section 16 where the memorial sits. Um, However, the removal of the memorial would not change the overall use and integrity of the ANC Historic District. Next slide. All historic properties within and adjacent to the APE that may be affected by the undertaking must be identified in this step of the Section 106 process. Historic properties within and adjacent to the APE include the Arlington National Cemetery Historic District, the Arlington House Historic District, the Fort Myer Historic District, and the Confederate Memorial. VDHR, the, our State Historic Preservation Office, recently concurred that the Confederate Memorial is individually eligible to the National Register of Historic Places. In addition, there are historic structures and features that contribute to these historic districts, uh, which are located within or adjacent to the APE. Um, there is, uh, so the indirect effects, uh, historic properties within the area of indirect effects include contributing features and structures within the viewshed of the proposed undertaking. And this slide provides this list of properties that are visible to and from the Confederate Memorial. There are no known archeological resources within the APE and the project does not uh, include any ground disturbance. Next slide, please. So at this time, I would like to solicit your comments on this step of the section 106 process. Um, before anyone raises a hand, um, please let me go over the instructions and our uh, specific questions to the group. And so if you still have your hand up from earlier, um, yep, if you can take those down, that'll help us. Um, we'll need those. We'll need that feature available when we start calling on uh, individuals and organizations. So when it is uh, time, uh, when we call on you, uh, if you wish to provide a comment, please follow the process on the slide, which is that all attendees should keep their microphone and camera off until they are called on to speak. 
all parties will have the same amount of time to speak. We ask that only one representative from your organization provides an oral comment. Due to the high number of attendees, we do not have available time to permit everyone to speak. Um, however, everyone is allowed to leave comments in the chat box. Um, if you have one spokesperson and they would like to cede the remainder of their time to another subject matter expert, they may, um, but you will, your organization will not receive additional time to speak. Each speaker will have uh, approximately one minute for their response. Then we will need to move on to the next consulting party. Uh, in the Zoom meeting controls, you will be clicking on the raised hand icon. I've seen most of you have already figured that out. Um, when your name is called, you're going to come off mute and turn on your camera if you have it. State your full name and organization and provide your response to the question. Once you've finished your response or your one minute has expired, you will be placed back on mute. If a party has no comment on a topic, please pass when you are called on. Uh, if you called in directly from your phone to join this meeting, you will need to press star 9 to virtually raise your hand, and that will let the meeting host know where to find you. Uh, and again, everyone can choose to write your response in the chat box rather than providing an oral comment. Uh, again, we ask that you please be courteous and respectful of others' opinions and statements. All voices are equally valued. Please respect the personal truths of others. Um, we're going to set aside judgments and assumptions. Our meeting aims to receive input from a diverse group of interested parties, each with their own valuable perspective. At this time, uh, Mr. Buller, our Associate Deputy, Deputy General Counsel for the Department of the Army, Office of the General Counsel, would like to stay, say a few words. Mr. Buller? Good afternoon uh, to everybody. Uh, my name is Justin Buller. I am from the Army General Counsel's Office, and I've been asked to offer a couple of clarifying comments with regards to the purpose for today's meeting. Uh, very specifically, the purpose of this meeting is not to discuss opposition to or uh, belief in favor of removal of the monument. That decision was made nearly a year ago by Congress. They have mandated the Department of Defense to take this action, and this is a non-discretionary action by the Department of Defense. Therefore, the purpose of this meeting will not be served by you stating your opposition to or support for removal. Further, the purpose of this meeting is not to determine disposition of the memorial. At some point in the future, that may be a point of one of these meetings, but at this time, it is not the point. I appreciate everybody's time and attendance in this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Buller. Uh, next slide. Thank you. Our first question to the consulting parties is, uh, well, first we'll take a quick poll. We'll let you test that uh, raised hand feature. Or, um, first we'll see uh, if we can get raised hands for uh, organizations, individuals who concur with the APE or the list of historic properties. You can raise your hand. Thank you. You can also enter your concurrence in the chat. So we'll give a moment to collect those. Thank you all. And then we can take those hands down. Thank you. So if you can take those hands down. Great, okay. If you do not concur with the APE or the list of historic properties, um, if you'd like to raise your hands, or you can enter your non-concurrence in the chat. Thank you. Noting your comments in the chat. So this is our first, and we'll, I'm going to leave that up for a second so we can 
get a snapshot of, of non-concurrence. So this is the first question that we are putting before the group, um, whether you do or do not concur with the APE or list of historic properties. How would you or your organization redefine the APE or which historic properties do you feel must be included in our analysis of effects? Please remember that APE includes direct effects and indirect effects, and indirect effects may be atmospheric, audible, or visible. Um, we will give everyone uh, a chance in a moment to speak, but um, presumably we would reserve most of the time for uh, organizations that do not agree with the APE or the identification of historic properties so they can explain their non-concurrence. Remember that only one spokesperson may provide verbal comments per consulting party for the sake of time, and that we're currently going to have a one-minute time limit um, for your response. All right. And uh, so do we still have our non-concurring parties up? So let's see. I'm trying to see the best way for me to call on individuals. I think the easiest way for me to do it is actually a, a roll call. Or actually, I see four hands up. Does that seem accurate? There were seven earlier. Okay. So if you can put your hands up again for those who do not concur. I see eight. I see eight. Okay. All right. So I will try to view the eight. Okay. I'm going to then call on each of those individuals um, who have their hands up one at a time. And uh, I'm seeing eight individuals. If when you, uh, when I call on you, if you can unmute and again, please identify yourself and your organization, and then you'll have one minute to provide your comment. Again, apologies if I mispronounce names, feel free to correct me. The first hand up I see is Wade Alford. You can come off mute. I think the APA is everywhere that section 16 can be viewed from. And that's about it. About it for my. You, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you identify uh, who you represent? Uh, Wait, so all for forward. Guardians of American History. Thank you, sir. Appreciate sorry. it. Thank you for that comment. Uh, and then the second hand I see up is uh, Vincent Balducci. You can come off mute. Yes, Vincent Balducci from uh, New Jersey Flaggers. And a quick comment is that the uh, area of um, permitted effects APA has yet to be finally determined. Uh, and that is um, the Army has not considered the memorial itself as a contributing uh, resource to a broader monument core and part of the Washington a monumental corridor master plan as explained in the defend arlington comments uh, as explained the um, views from mount vernon through the capital must be included in the uh, nhpa area of potential effects thank you thank you very much for your comment uh, the next hand i see is gene kaiser jr You can come off mute, Mr. Kaiser. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, I think the uh, APE is much too small that it should include the entire Washington Monumental Corridor Master Plan. And also uh, Ernie Blevins, uh, scholar of uh, monuments of this period, said that the Confederate Memorial is really the headstone of the entire Confederacy. So 
really the the APE is really the entire country, the entire South at least. So, and I'd also like to make the comment that we didn't uh, really have a lot of time to prepare our comments with only, uh, you know, a few hours of notice. I would have loved to have submitted a written comment, but the uh, time period was only three hours from the notification. So, that's that's my comment. Thank you for your comment. The next hand I see is William Mason. Can you hear me? Yes. My name is William Mason. I'm the vice president of the Monumental Task Committee. We're a nonprofit organization in South Louisiana that preserves and maintains all monuments, statues in this area. I'm also a retired U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel with 28 years of service. The APE should include, to be thorough, not only any memorial or monument in Arlington National Cemetery, but all monuments and memorials nationwide to include the entire country everywhere. Because if it's good for one area, it should be good for everything. Thank you okay. for your comment. Thank you for your comment and your service. Uh, the next hand I see is Ann McLean. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. The APE should include everything that was in the Macmillan Olmstead plan. It should be much wider with George Washington National Parkway. This was all part of a complete program uh, to memorialize the healing and the reconciliation of the United States after um, the war between the states and, and finished and after the Spanish-American War. So th this area needs to be expanded. And that's my comment. Thank you. And can you please state uh, who you represent? Oh, yes, I represent the Virginia Council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next hand is David McAllister. Hello. Am I on? Yes. Fine. I'm David McAllister with the Friends of GDP Benjamin. And I agree with the previous speakers that the area of potential effect is really much broader, at, at the minimum, including the entire United States, because this particular memorial uh, ties together all the other memorials at national parks, especially battlefields, anything that has to do with the war between the states. And it actually has a worldwide effect because it affects the perception of Jewish artists worldwide. That's why Judah P. Benjamin, friends of, is, is particularly interested. Um, you know, a, a uh, focus of the national attention was the vision of McKinley when he initiated this entire project, the uh, APE is much broader than just the circumference of Arlington National Cemetery. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next, Jenny Wodowski. Hi, my name is Jenny Wadowski. I'm president of the United Daughters of the Confederacy. At this time, I believe that this should be the APE should include all areas as this was a monument to bring our country together after the war. It was to bring healing and peace. It, and at this point in time, we need to put this on the historical registry. In 1907, the daughters took on this project. It was approved by four presidents along with the Arlington National Cemetery every step of the way to build this and to put this in this section and i believe that we need to have more time on this and to be able to look at it so that we can continue what president mckinley started back then so please take in our our words and i hope that we hear some positive things thank you thank you for your comment 
Uh, next up, uh, Edward Phillips. Hello, this is H. Edward Phillips. I am the National Public Affairs Officer of Sons of Confederate Veterans. And I do believe that the APE should be expanded. And the rationale for that is in Section 16, where the monument resides, the Reconciliation Memorial, there are Confederate service members, veterans who are American veterans, and they represent each and every Confederate state or former Confederate state, I should say. So to me, logically, even on the memorial itself, it names and lists each one of those states. I think those state SHPOs should be involved. I believe we haven't had any commentary from them. And it's one of those, it's, it's going to impact their, you know, residents, their citizens, because their citizens are people who descend from some of the men who are buried in Section 16 and some of the spouses as well. So I think to just narrowly define it, and keep it limited to ANC itself is too small of an area because I think this impact, you know, each one of these states has a quote unquote dog in the hunt. They should be able to come here and provide commentary and try to help move the ball forward. Thank you for your comments. comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, Kirk Lyons. Kirk Lyons. I can come back to you. Uh, oh, I'm, nope. I, I'm out. Okay. Great. Uh, Kirk D. Lyons of the Southern Eagle Resource Center. I'm a director. Uh, the APE should be broadened. This, the uh, Confederate Reconciliation Memorial is of national and international importance. Moses Ezekiel was the first internationally acclaimed um, Jewish American sculptor uh, of the late 19th century. Um, this is his masterpiece. It's an art treasure. If the Nazis had demolished this during World War II, they'd have been prosecuted for it at Nuremberg as a episode of cultural genocide. So this monument needs to be protected. It's to remove it would be to desecrate 400 graves. And it's certainly the headstone of Moses Ezekiel and should not be removed for that remove that reason, which is was beyond the mandate of the National Defense Authorization uh, Naming Commission's recommendations so also this is putting the cart before the horse this process should have been going on before secretary of austin made his decision um it is it, it his so-called non-discretionary decision it is a discretionary decision there are reasons that it should not be taken down and this process is is an example of one of those reasons this should have been done before his decision, not after. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Mark Buchanan. Um, uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Secretary Austin directed the DOD to adopt the Naming Commission's recommendations before uh, the decision to do the NEPA process. And this environmental impact statement must consider the political motives that came along with all of this. Uh, decisions based on political motives of the day can have significant impact on the historic and cultural environment of our American people. Arlington is where this monument belongs. Where it stands and what it represents cannot be adequately replicated in any other location. It creates a dangerous precedent. That's why the APA needs to be expanded because this will have an effect on the fact of moving uh, future monuments from federal lands. I'm currently out in South, uh, South Dakota right now, and there are people there who fought and killed uh, federal troops out here. And their monument is located on the battlefield right next to the National Monument there at Little Bighorn. This could affect that location as well. Leave the Reconciliation Monument alone and deal with the real issues facing our country. 
Don't allow a temporary political agenda to ruin our precious national treasures there or a little bighorn or any other place across this United States. Thank you for your comment. So I see one more hand for the non-concurrence, uh, James Schillinglaw. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes. Uh, I'm not used to this kind of a platform. My name is James Schillinglaw. I'm with Save Southern Heritage. I'm one of the founding members, a uh, 20-year Navy veteran, and uh, I do not concur with this. I think the time schedule is very quick for such an historic monument. You know, even if you're forward against it, we need more uh, time to work with this. Or, you know, I don't really agree with VMI getting it because VMI has nothing to do with this monument. Um, I think if you're going to do anything with it, give it back to Sons of Confederate Veterans. But I'm sure I'm a life member of Sons of Confederate Veterans. I'm sure they would agree to keep it in place. I think it's a very historical monument. I don't think it has any kind of impact where it's at. We've always been told, take the Confederate monuments out of public view and put them in a the cemetery where the soldiers are. And that's exactly where this monument is. And the platform of Safe Southern Heritage is the monument should be where the Confederate soldiers exactly where it's at. And uh, we're against this timeline that you've put us on. And we would like to extend more timeline or have more dialogue or understand more of this APE that you've come up with. And we have no understanding of who it's supposed to impact anyways. If there's a victim of this monument, we would love to uh, meet this person. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. I see uh, John Coffin Daffer. Lieutenant Colonel John Coffin Daffer. It looks like you're unmuted. Oh, no, you're on mute again. Sir, are you able to, to speak? Otherwise, I'll come back to you. I'm going to move on for a, a second and come back to you. Uh, James Schillinglaw. Or no, I'm sorry, we already spoke to you. <laughs> if you can take your hand down, my apologies. I'm trying to keep up. Oh, uh, sorry about that. That's all right. Um, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Coffin Duffer, it looks like you're unmuted, but I'm not hearing you. I'm going to move on again. If you're having technical issues and want to enter uh, your question or comment in the chat, we can try to assist you. Uh, the next hand I see is L.M. Siegel. Yes.
Thank you for your comment. Thank you, team. Yes, so I hear that uh, Karen Bennett, you have your hand raised. Would you like to speak? Well, the yes, APE. thank you. Caitlin, this is Karen Bennett. I'm speaking on behalf of Defend Arlington. Um, due to the one minute time limit, I'm not going to um, speak to the substance of what's going on here, but I'm going to address the, the uh, procedural deficiencies that I'm seeing. I do a lot of EIS and a lot of National um, Historic Preservation Act work in my practice. I have never seen a process conducted in this way. You, um, 8,000 or more comments were submitted on September this for the September 2nd deadline. A number of those addressed the in the um, the size of the APE and suggested that there and provided good information, credible information about historic um, resources that are potentially there. Um, the Army could not have possibly uh, considered all of those comments and and responded with a revised APE and list of. Uh, of historic resources that you've identified by September 20th, notwithstanding where you're taking a vote on concur or not concur based on something we've never seen before. You presented this to us just now today. You're telling us you revised the APE based on some public comments. Um, and, and, and now you're asking us to vote. That is absolutely procedurally incorrect under both of these statutes that you would even suggest something like that at a meeting like this. Um, we had three hours to submit written comments and we had none of this information. So I'm gonna suggest that we're not done here with step one and that to move forward um, with Bennett? step is completely um, outside the context of what the regulations would require. Thank you for your comment, Ms. Bennett. Sorry, the, uh, your minutes minute is up. Um, but thank you. Lieutenant Colonel, um, were we able to figure out your, uh, your issues with the microphone? Yes, hi, Caitlin. Lieutenant Excellent, Colonel, I can hear you. Great. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Coffendaff for the United States Air Force, retired. Um, we strenuously defending veterans, um, veterans defending Arlington, sorry. Uh, we strenuously object to the Army's attempt to fast track the required regulatory reviews, and uh, this being one of them. It, has anyone uh, reached out to, um, to other nations? Because uh, I have had several uh, citizens from other countries contact me on Facebook and say, what the heck is going on here? Uh, one was ca uh, a Canadian uh, reached out to me, uh, and there is a Canadian Confederate soldier buried in the shadow of the Reconciliation Memorial. Um, a Polish man, you know, as close as Canada, as far as way as Poland, I had a Polish man contact me and said, what the heck are you all doing? And um, so the the, the big thing is that, that we haven't gone to a fully encompassing uh, everyone out there on the APE. Um, you know, to, to define it there uh, on, on this chart, but we haven't, this is not given full respect to who it affects, and it affects everybody out there, um, especially in regards to. Uh, uh, the Jewish community. What has been done on the outreach on this? I'd have to say a lot of nothing. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. So those are all the raised hands I've seen. We wanted to make sure we got to those. I believe we still have time. So I'm going to uh, ask that uh, anyone else who would like to uh, comment on the APE or the list of historic properties. If you can raise your hand at this time, um, we'll make sure we get to those other individuals.
So I'm pausing to see if anyone else would like to comment on the APE or the list of historic properties. And so far, I'm seeing no other raised hands. Okay, I see one. Uh, Edwin Kennedy. Yes, this is Lieutenant Colonel Retired Ed Kennedy. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'd just like to make a couple of comments. Uh, first of all, 29 years in uniform beginning during Vietnam. I have never experienced this kind of behavior in our country until recently. And what I find disgusting is that false premises keep being parroted. For example, this does not commemorate the Confederate States of America. It, com it commemorates the soldiers who are dead and buried there. So it, we got to get past parroting false premises because they become truths to some people. Um, what's going to happen in a few years when people say, well, we want to get rid of Union Army memorials because the Army was segregated from 1863 until 1948 officially. That's racism. So what about all those monuments that are to the Union Army? And I can only name about three on my fingers of those dedicated to black soldiers in, in the war. What about all the ones with the white faces on them to the racist Union Army? This is gonna be the same problem in just a few years. We'll get into this frenzy of shark feeding blood in the water, someone's going to say Black Lives Matter will say those are racist, they need to come down. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. So before I move on to another topic, again, anyone who would like to speak on the AP or list of historic properties, concurring, non-concurring, if you have a comment and would like a one minute to speak, um, please raise your hand now before I move on to our next topic. All right, seeing nothing, we'll go to our next topic. So as has been stated, we have not moved beyond identification of historic properties. This meeting is an important step in uh, concluding and determining what the appropriate APE and list of historic properties is. We are starting to think about and develop our finding of adverse effects. We do believe that there are adverse effects. Uh, adverse effects, uh, as they are defined in the regulations, state that um, adverse effects are when an undertaking may alter directly or indirectly any of the characteristics of a historic property that qualify it for inclusion in the National Register in a manner that would diminish the integrity of the property's location, design, setting, materials, workmanship, feeling, or association. One of the things we must look at are the potential effects to all historic, historic properties identified in the prior Section 106 step and determine if the undertaking will have any effects on these properties. So today we will seek comments from you, the consulting parties, on the assessment of effects to historic properties. Do you believe that there are effects to historic properties that have been previously identified in addition to the Confederate Memorial and the Arlington National Cemetery Historic District? At this time, we are only seeking comments on effects of the disassembly and storage of the bronze elements of the memorial. If you would like to uh, provide comments on potential effects to historic properties, please raise your hands at this time and I will call on you. Remember, we're asking for only one spokesperson to provide oral comments per consulting party. And remember that if you're on the phone, you need to hit uh, star nine or pound nine to raise your hand. All right, 
I see some hands raised, so I'm going to start going down the list. Uh, first, I see Jean Kaiser. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'd just like to say if the uh, Confederate Memorial is demolished or removed from Arlington National Cemetery, it will absolutely destroy Arlington National Cemetery as our nation's most sacred burial ground. If ANC destroys a 109-year-old monument to peace and reconciliation, you know, the, the NDAA from 2021, Elizabeth Warren's amendment, it does not require the Confederate Memorial to be removed. I know your, your material that you have on the website states that, but that is not true. The NDAA does not even mention, Congress did not even mention the Confederate Memorial. What Congress did was set up the Naming Commission and they submitted reports and the Naming Commission's report on the Confederate Memorial is not true. It's a fraud, in fact. It's a historical fraud. It does not even mention the reconciliation theme that came about by numerous presidents. All the memorial wreaths that were sent to the Confederate Memorial, Barack Obama sent a memorial wreath. He was certainly not commemorating the Confederacy. If you remove the Confederate Memorial and leave 500 graves in concentric circles around it, you desecrate all those graves and all those states that those people came from is at least 15, maybe 18. You sir, my, sir, my apologies, but your, your time is up. Okay, thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next hand I see is Anne McLean. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I'm from the Virginia Council, which is a preservation group in Virginia. If this is removed, this actually diminishes the importance of the um, main, the, the, the monument to the Spanish-American War, which was a precedent for the um, circularity that is seen in this design by Moses Ezekiel. That was derived from the monument to the Spanish-American War. And to remove this, they talk to each other. All of these sculptures in uh, whether it is kind of connected to the Memorial Bridge, which was a huge band-aid between Virginia and the Lincoln Memo Memorial, whether it is the GW Parkway, all of these talk to each other. And this is built off of the Tomb to the Unknown Soldiers also, which is, as you've walked probably around, see how close it is to this. This To remove this is just complete folly. And no one with the title of preservationist should ever, ever want to remove bronze elements of such a high skill and quality as well. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And again, I do appreciate when uh, when when you open up your mic, if you uh, name, thank you, your organization, um, since everyone is not familiar with everyone uh, in this meeting. Uh, the next hand I see is Vincent Balducci. Uh, hey, y'all. Vincent Balducci from uh, New Jersey Flaggers. I am the president. And um, this is coming right from the heart because, again, I wish that we would have had a little bit more notice to speak on this. One thing that really just disgusts me with this is that this is in a cemetery and to other people's comments, right? When this whole stuff started, the thing was, okay, move everything to a cemetery. What does this say to other veterans that are buried at the cemetery? You know, we've seen time and time again where it starts at one monument and it leads down to the graves. We've had three Confederate generals be dug up this last year in various states. We never thought that would happen. My ancestor is buried in Arlington, General Fighting Joe Wheeler. Do I have to worry about his memorial being removed next because he proudly wore the gray? And not to mention that this monument, this high quality art, it's irreplaceable. It will be destroyed from removal. And you also have graves that will be impacted by the removal process to where it cannot be effectively replaced. And that's coming from the heart. Again, very disgusted in this. Thank you for y'all's time and God bless Dixie. Thank you for your comment. The next hand I see is Wade Alford. Wade Alford. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay, I'd just like to ask, who's going to speak for those dead veterans buried in those circles that decided to be buried around that monument? We can't ask them. This is unmitigatable. This is crazy. And I don't appreciate your timeline. That's all I got to say. Thank you for your comments. Judith Ezekiel. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, hi. I'm um, a professor of history and co-initiator of a letter of 42 relatives of Moses Ezekiel signed in 2017 asking for the removal of the monument. I think that it will have a positive effect for many reasons, among them the fact that the um, the statue promotes false narratives, several false, false narratives, and among them the myth of the Black Confederate soldier removing the monument, no one's talking about destroying it at this point, um, would be a positive, um, it would have a positive impact. It would also make it much uh, better, a much better atmosphere for African American families visiting the cemetery. Um, I uh, Most of the signers, I think all of the signers were Jewish. There's no way that this is an anti-Semitic act. The fact that um, Ezekiel was a, that Moses was a famous Jewish sculptor does not authorize um, promoting false narratives uh, and supporting Jim Crow America the way that the monument does. So I think removing it will have a positive impact, not a negative impact. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. William Mason. Can you hear me? Yes, we can see you. I'm w William Mason, Vice President of the Monumental Task Committee down here in South Louisiana. I believe wholeheartedly this will have a very negative effect on all historic properties because the whole concept of judging yesterday's events on today's standards is a very slippery slope that has no logical end. We could therefore, on the basis that their view, politicians are using to remove this monument, we could connect the dots out to various other monuments around the country, including the one the gentleman earlier stated in South Dakota to the Indians. And I am personally involved at the local level with the VFW, American Legion, every veterans group in this area. We're contemplating a new monument to veterans that are very good friends of ours who didn't come back from Afghanistan and Iraq. We don't want to embark on an endeavor that's a lot of work putting up a monument to today's heroes if years from now a politician is going to say we fought for oil or some other reason and then have that monument or memorial removed. Thank you for your comment. David McAllister. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. I'm trying to start the video, but it says the host has stopped it. I'm David McAllister, friends of Judah P. Benjamin. Uh, adverse effects. Removal is removal. It is axiomatic that removal is an adverse effect uh, and is, in fact, unmitigatable. Uh, this monument was designed and constructed for that place and only for that place. It is a slippery slope to remove anything bronze. You know, ultimately, uh, this memorial may never see the light of day again if it's put in storage, like in that the end of the first Indiana Jones movie, some sort of big warehouse somewhere. Uh, it will lessen the inventory or catalog of public art and brutalize culture through iconoclasm. This monument is in and of itself a great example of American Renaissance style. Its loss is an unmitigated, unmitigatable um, cultural and artistic loss to the entire nation of a serious level. It does form the link between all other memorials, the Battleship Maine, the Unknown Soldier, even the Washington and Lincoln memorials and Jefferson memorials in Washington City itself. Uh, even the Martin Luther King Memorial in the mall uh is linked to this particular memorial without it none of these have any relevance thank you sir thank you for your comment 
uh, Jenny Wadowski. Jenny Wadowski, United Daughters of the Confederacy. We are not endorsing forgetting of our past. We want to celebrate the nation's healing and building upon unification. This is a piece of artwork that tells our history and tells a story. We cannot go and say that this will not have an adverse effect when history is history and all sides need to be told from the start to the end and we need to teach from it this is a very unique piece of artwork and it would be sad to see it go into storage because then that is going to lead us down a path of history never took place which it did it's also having an adverse effect on that circle and all the graves that surround that monument it will have a negative impact when right now that was built to bring peace and healing. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Koffendeffer. Hi, this is Lieutenant Colonel Koffendeffer. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. No. I've attended several of these meetings. Uh, well, I've attended all of them. And some of the words that I've heard used not only by the attendees, but also by uh, the government ANC staff is iconic Arlington, nation's most hallowed and sacred ground. Iconic. Is this what we do? to our iconic and, and most sacred and hallowed ground in America? Is this what we do? We remove things because of presentism? The legislation that was created by the Naming Commission specific, specifically excluded grave markers. This is indeed a grave marker. It's a marker not only symbolic of the 500 graves around it, but of all the unknown areas in which American soldiers were buried throughout America. This is just the first step. We know that grave space is of a premium at Arlington. Is this just the first step? We're going to get rid of that, and then we're going to relocate those Confederate graves to their appropriate states. In Alabama, for example, there's 36 graves okay. around the Reconciliation Memorial. Are they going to come back to Alabama so we can free up some real estate there? What is going on? This is totally ridiculous. Sir, you're, thank you for your comment. Your, your time is up. The next name I see is... Uh, H. Edward Phillips. Thank you again, Ms. Smith. H. Edward Phillips on behalf of the Sons of Confederate Veterans. In relation to Arlington and elements of Arlington, first we have to remember that this memorial is a contributing element to the placement of Arlington on the historic register. It itself could be on the historic register. And in particular, when you look at the tomb of the Civil War unknowns, which is a vault, a burial vault that houses or contains the remains of 2,144 soldiers of the war, both U.S. and Confederate. They're intermingled in a grave. And the thing is, once we start going down this road and looking at classifications, of course, it's going to impact these historic properties because it goes back to what Lieutenant Gerald, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gerald Torrance had said uh, on November 8th as part of the advisory committee meeting for Arlington. And he basically said it's insidious to move this. You have to have this element in place to tell the story of the Civil War. And the, you know, the last point I've got is that there's also a marker that contextualizes the monument. And if people want to read the contextualization, they can read what the government thinks about this monument. But again, I think it you know, unduly impacts ANC and in particular, the uh, Civil War Unknown soldier, Soldier's Vault or Burial Chamber. Sir, thank you for your comment. Uh, the next hand I see is uh, Kirk Lyons. Uh, 
Thank you. My name is Kirk D. Lines. I'm the director of the Southern Legal Resource Center. If you remove this monument, you will damage it. It's not a matter of whether or not you will damage it. It's a matter of how much you will damage it. You will damage it if you try to move a monument erected in 1914 anywhere. To remove it, to demolish it would be a crime against humanity, a crime against art. And it would be a violation of the United Nations Charter on Human Rights and probably a violation of the Genocide Convention, which unfortunately the United States has never signed. If you take this down, you desecrate a grave, you take away the headstone of Moses, Ezekiel, and 400 plus other veterans that are buried there. This should not be done, and you should leave it alone. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Edwin Kennedy. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Lieutenant Colonel Ed Kennedy. I'm a retired Army officer. Spent 19 years teaching graduate studies at the U.S. Army Command and General Staff College. I'm a certified military historian, taught the Civil War uh, core curriculum and electives. For 25 years, I've been giving talks on Black Confederate soldiers, and I like to dissuade people that there's a myth. It is a fact that they existed. We get back to the false premise. People say, well, there's a Black enslaved mammy on the monument. False. We don't know if she's enslaved or not. No one knows that. There were thousands of free Blacks in the South. How do we know that that person is enslaved or not? So the premise is wrong. So the argument to take the monument down because of racism is wrong. I wish somebody would ask Al Arnold back. He came to one of the first meetings and spoke. Al is Black. He's very proud of his Black ancestor who served as an orderly for General Robert E. Lee. He's published three different books on this topic. Sir? He's, yes. My apologies, but your your minute is... Thank you. Is Thank you for your comment. L.M. Siegel. Ma'am. Thank you. Your your minute is up. Um, just a reminder to the uh, to the group, if you can, uh, we want to make sure we're accepting comments uh, related to, in this case, adverse effects, um, or or. If you had comments on the AP or historic properties that were not addressed earlier, um, we are not discussing uh, whether or not the memorial should be removed. Uh, I see uh, two more hands. Mr. James Schillinglaw. Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Uh, um I'm an historian too, so this modern technology <laughs> kind of confuses me. <laughs> uh, well, 
the first thing I want to say, I just don't understand why this we're even having this conversation about the monument. I know we're not supposed to argue, move or stay or whatever. I just don't know why this came onto the national dialogue because it's the Arlington National Cemetery, and this is a monument, really a marker marking the Confederate graves. The statue itself is about, you know, the soldiers. It's not about the Confederacy or, you know, this stuff. Um, you know, I just don't see how this even is being talked about today. But besides the point, some people are saying it might be offensive to other people. But if you remove it, you could breed racism because if, you know, the, you know, the soldiers descendants of these people see their monuments come down, they might breed racism in their soul. So if you keep it up, you're kind of keeping racial tensions at bay. Um, that's one issue to kind of understand too. That's what Charlottesville was all about. That's the reason why these monuments started coming down. Charlottesville was a protest to keep the Confederate monument sure. up. That's what it was all about. But I would say, uh, I wish we could go back to understanding why this even came onto the list of removal. If somebody can explain sure. that. Oh, apologies, your your minute is up. Thank you for your comment. I see one more hand. Uh, Clark Mercer. Clark Mercer. Uh, my hand was up accidentally. My apologies. Okay. Thank you. And then, uh, Mr. Schilling, while your hand went back up, but I, I believe you've already had your minute. Uh, Karen Bennett, uh, you have a minute. Thank you, Caitlin. Karen Bennett for Defend Arlington. Um, again, I concur with a number of the comments here, but I'm going to focus on the substance of the comments, but I'm going to focus on procedural um, deficiencies that I see and that will um, really jeopardize the decision that the Army eventually ultimately makes in this case. Um, we should not be talking about effects. Yes, of course, we think there are effects to historic proper properties. And in our comments on September 2nd, we named a number of provided um, a, a, a great deal of additional information that the Army is required to evaluate and consider. We've not we don't believe any of that has been done. So right now, having this discussion is premature. Um, you need to take a step back, look at the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation's guidelines and guidance as to the four-step um, four process that we're, we're marching through expeditiously here. Um, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yes, your your minute is is up. Okay, so I see no more hands. Again, if the group has comments on the APE, the historic properties, or as we are starting to think about effects, well, those are the comments we are looking for today. Also, if you have questions on process or how to get in touch with us, how to offer your comments, you can put those in the chat. I am seeing no more hands. So if we can go to our next slide. So again, uh, our agency, ANMC, continues to consult with the DHR uh, on the current step, uh, identification of historic properties. Um, that is where we are at today. That's what you're seeing on this slide. Um, that is not concluded yet, and your input uh, helps us greatly as we work towards that. Um, we will hold subsequent meetings with the consulting parties uh, to discuss if there are adverse effects 
and uh, if there are, how to resolve them in future. Um, we will also, as noted earlier in the meeting, um, we will, there are different levels of consulting parties. Uh, we will be holding meetings with smaller groups, the entitled and the invited signatories to have further discussions regarding the resolution of any potential adverse effects when we get to that point and when we begin the preparation of an agreement document between ANMC, DHR, ACHP, and the con other consulting parties. Next slide. So we appreciate your participation in today's consulting parties meetings and your, and your comments. I'd ask that you please visit the project website to access additional information, and we will remain in contact with you through email, providing information as it becomes available, and to continue working through the Section 106 process. Please continue to email us at anc-commemorative-works at you at, sorry, I'll, I'll repeat that. Please continue to email us at anc-commemorative-works at army.mil to provide additional thoughts or suggestions. We thank you for your time this afternoon, and we'll leave the slide up so you can, if you'd like to copy down the email or the uh, web address. Thank you. Recording stopped.